Jesus. Holy. Holy. Shaktag is more than just a group of people who come together to play the most authentic military sim on the planet. They are a hardcore band of brothers dedicated to the realism, tactics, and serious fun of Armor 3. Accidental Heroes. On the front line with the world's most hardcore virtual platoon. Armor isn't an ordinary first-person shooter. It's a war sandbox that players use to create their own stories. Scale and fidelity define this multiplayer game. Air and ground vehicles roam hundreds of square kilometers of lifelike terrain. For one community of veteran players, all of this authenticity is just a means to an end. That's serious fun. Serious fun. <laughs> serious fun. This is the motto of Shaktag, one of the longest running communities of military role players. About 230 players from all over the world play in Shaktag, and they meet every week to play out military scenarios. The group was founded by Dyslexi, a prior service US Marine. In forming Shaktag, one of the things that initially was very high on my mind was taking the things that I had experienced in the Marines that I thought were really positive, which were things like esprit de corps, history, you know, looking out for each other and that sort of thing and making those core values of, of our community as well. The main reason I enjoy Armour so much is not for Armour, it's for the community. Who I play with, what we do each every every week is just, it's been a blast. Honestly, uh, with the way Shaktak plays, it mostly feels like a movie every time we play throughout a mission. It's the scope, the size, the people involved. Shaktak is who I want to play with because the people that make it up are some of the coolest people I know. The group designs its own missions from scratch entering combat in hierarchies of squads and fire teams, as Shaktak fights against platoons of AI-controlled soldiers. In 2018, Shaktak fought one of its most legendary battles. This is the story of that mission. The mission basically started off as a, as a defensive thing in which there were two squads which were split from each other, but not too far away. But in the jungle being, you know, not too far away, kind of is far away. We had to hold a location, we had to protect a computer that was doing basically a data download. And we could only do it from this one place. Uh, somewhere where we had access to a satellite, and we had to defend this position for a certain amount of time while that download happened. That was the entire mission. Everything that happened after that was a surprise. The visibility or awareness of what was happening with our sister squad, Bravo, was pretty low just because of how much chaos was going on. Mortars impacting infantry, rushing us, and people taking wounds and stuff. Hellish. A hellish scenario. We had the routine teams, we had the routine numbers, but it just didn't feel effective because of the weather, the elements, the view distance thanks to the fog. It was a brutal situation. Of the 30-something soldiers that began the mission, Chris, Chris only about 12 survived the initial assault. It's very hard to retain control of a situation when you've got so many elements working against you like that. The defense was complete, but Bravo squad is decimated, ground down to just three survivors. Alpha takes a shortcut through the jungle to the west to meet up with them, where Bravo is waiting with three vehicles. They won't get a chance to use them. We'd accomplished our objective there, and it was time to withdraw. And then that is basically when everything uh, went poorly. Are we or what? Holy! Oh Holy! This is it. This is it. We get in these vehicles. We go for a 30-second drive. Mission over. Relief. And then you've just got the rug pulled out from underneath you. And it's in the most violent way possible, which is there's our rescue. It's just exploded. It's a massacre as the two squads merge. All of those lofty ideas about you know stick with the team. The, the the overall mission, things like that, start to fade away and you're, you're more concentrating on survival, watching your perimeter, not getting shot. Bodies in the grass, bullets cracking overhead. The enemy are uncomfortably oh, close. You okay? <laughs> Holy <laughs> Ohio's dead. <laughs> I'm bleeding now. Almost everyone is dead. Of the 28 who began the mission, 
just three survivors remain. Dyslexi, Chris, and Ghost Boots. Jesus Chris, let's go. There was no reason for us to stay there any longer. We had gotten the objective. It was falling apart. We needed to bug out. So we were stretched out. We're trying to move. And as we're moving to the base, we start getting attacked from every direction. Not just where we're coming from or where we're going, but from the right, from the left, you know, in the corners, poking around trees. As the trio escapes, Ghost Boots is shot in the leg. Oh, I just got shot in the leg. In this desperate retreat, a glimmer emerges. The mission admin sends out a message. Hold out, friendly vehicles inbound. Off to the southwest, a new squad spawns into the mission. I reinforced a Charlie squad, and our job was to go find and rescue Alpha survivors. One omniscient player takes the role of mission admin, overseeing the action like a military dungeon master. Essentially, it's like a director saying, hey, you need to hold this base or you need to go to this base. We execute those plans and the admin's working behind the scenes, spawning the AI, creating the situation. They're the star of their little action movie that sometimes it goes really well and more often than not, it probably doesn't go as well. It's two elements, us three survivors and Charlie, getting closer and closer together over time. It's not an instant thing, but it's a fight, and it's gradual. Progress is being made. Yeah, I can see what you're firing. So they're still alive somehow. Low on supplies, the survivors get a welcome gift from above. Resupply, resupply. <laughs> Thank you, God. <laughs> Thank you, Almighty, for this gift you have given us. That was one of those things that the admin can do, where it's just like, if he can keep it going, keep it interesting, he wants us to be rescued because that's more interesting for everyone so he's going to drop that to keep us going so getting to a medical crate like that the things we're looking for we want morphine which allows us to take the influence of pain and lessen that we want bandages so if we get hit again we can stop the bleeding epinephrine pins if you take a hit that's so bad that it prevents you from actually running epi can give you a brief period of time where you can run we've made some contact we've made a contact with alpha copy that instruct them to move south have instructions to move in the charlie hole we felt like the cavalry had arrived. Don't you guys have cars? That's all you got. No, it exploded. Oh boy, all right, that's, that's the So you bring extras. Cameras. Shortly after, we realized that they were just as in a chaotic state as we were. Hey, four. No, just no, a three. Just three. A three. Hey, hop in here. He's a no, you, you're injuring yeah, all of us by trees. Oh. I'm sorry. Yeah. Once you get up off this, like, you're going up this hill, there's gonna be a road. Bailing, bailing, bailing! I'm out. That's the worst Uber ever. <laughs> I'm <laughs> legs again. Ghost Boots loads the wounded Shaktak leader into the UAZ, dragging him to the car door. Getting abducted. I'm in. On it, working on it. Everyone, everyone on the, the situation starts to get dire. Half the people are dead. We're out of medical supplies. Everything is broken. MG Bait leads the group of three vehicles. But up the road, an ambush is waiting. It's starting to feel pretty good because we've been driving for some time. It looks like we may have broken contact. You know, hope is around the corner and nope, there's an RPG. Oh! admin has already planned for an ambush that we drove straight into and you see it the vehicle everything's fine as it comes around the corner it explodes in this beautiful violent light and we freak the hell out oh, oh, no! No! just keep going chris reacts like an absolute god and drives around the vehicle and it was like, and you, you play that back in normal speed, he had like one, maybe half second to make that decision. Move out of the f no, Jesus! She Chris, just keep- Holy oh, shit, you hit someone! It doesn't matter, he's not one of us! <laughs> oh, Chris is out! No. Chris is hitting, out, he's shot hitting the head! With I'm hitting him with that beat! I'm stopping his bleed! Because it was just this crazy moment, and that wasn't even the end of it. As soon as we get past it, Chris gets shot. He gets shot and knocked unconscious, and we start pulling off the road. I kept driving. The LZ was not that far ahead, and if I stopped, I rationaled, I'd be putting more people in danger. Stopping is often death in that scenario, but it got all of them in the end.
None of them made it out. So we eventually drive to an area that's a, like a, little, a little outpost in the middle of the jungle. And we don't know that we have any particular kind of air extract coming in, but we're requesting it. The final survivors end up in a place much like where they started. A series of trenches encircling a small base. It's an LZ, not a f***ing Ford. There's ditches that we can get into. Well, get out of the car and get into the ditches. They take a defensive position, and then, for a third time, an enemy confronts the group without warning. Oh, sh What the fuck is that? And Dyslexia and I are both like, what the, you know, what the hell? And then it just slams into the UAZ that we were driving, like crashes into it. And he just T-bones the UAZ. I'm alive, I jumped out of the car. Get in, Chris. <laughs> he jumped out of the right time. I know. Holy, <laughs> holy sh There's a few problems. One, um, we don't have a helicopter waiting for us. Southeast. firing at every single infantry we can see and when I say every infantry we can see it's the the ones that actually exit the tree line because who knows how many more there are. So in this particular instance one of the things that was helpful is that we we're in a well-defined position. We were in a, an outpost that had a trench line running more or less all the way around it. We were in that trench we could communicate that up to the pilot. Is there gonna be a rescue here? Are they gonna actually try it? If he's coming in now be ready. I don't think he is though. Their eyes scan the tree line for enemy silhouettes. We are all tied on the LZ and ready. Stay out of that open area. They clutch their fragile defense. Okay, Knowing guys. those situations from experience, you have one shot. That that bird comes in and it either blows up because an RPG slams into it, or everyone loads up and leaves. Here we go, here we go. It's the end of the That's his way. The chopper descends. A final lifeline from the heavens. Even as the survivors board, rockets cut through the air and detonate around the LZ. It is the final punctuation of this bloody escape. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, that was tight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dyslexia, Chris, I'm so happy I got to share that with you. That was incredible. <laughs> I still got four magazines. Do we want to go back? Well, I think Dissexy's uh, slogan of serious fun captures uh, the, 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 the ethos of, of Shack Tag. You can suck at the game, but if you're a cool person, let's go. Get in here. What that sense of community does for people in their real lives has shifted the emphasis strongly towards making sure that the community is as healthy as possible. People are, are looking out for each other who care, who have compassion and empathy and also play a game. Being around those people, you're not around toxicity. You're in fact around a culture that is super against toxicity. And pretty much it's that sense of camaraderie that you've been playing with some people for years. Um, and the interplay between them, the jokes, the ribbing, um, the, the, the drama that comes out of, you know, somebody exploding from a tank shell. It's a video game. I don't mind dying if it means saving people's lives. And if I can do it being just a dramatic bitch, I'm gonna do it because that's so much funner. The glue that bonds Shaktak isn't a military procedure or a set of rules, but a larger sense of belonging. Sure, the casualties were high that day, but at least everyone died having the most fun you can have in a video game.